Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another Dice Throwing Adventures video. This is video number four. A uh, quick recap of what we've done in the previous videos, which I will link in the description. Uh, video one, we went through just showing off all the basic components of the game and going through the instructions. A little bit longer video, uh, but just to get familiar with how to play the how to play the new adventures mode. Uh, video two, we went through all of the different location environment tiles. Uh, just so we knew what all of those were. Video 3, we went through, um, all the different minions. Oh, and their different cards here. And video 4 here, we're now going to actually jump into the boss decks. So we have the four different bosses, the Fallen Barbarian. The Fallen Gunslinger. The Fallen Monk. And then finally the Mad King. So we'll look over at their four dashboards as well as their decks of cards. Um, I've been trying to keep the videos about a half hour or so for all the con all the non-rule stuff. This one might go a little bit longer. Um, and then I'll also link in the description a how to play the game, so if you weren't familiar um, with how to actually play Dice Throne, like just the regular mode of it, it's in there as well. So first thing I do want to kind of look at is we have our four different health dials. Um, so they have one for each that has a picture of one of the different bosses on there. So there's the Gunswinger, um, here's the Barbarian, um, and then they have a couple of the other minions on there. Here's the Fallen Monk, and there's the Mad King. Now, you're not, you know, forced to use any of these per any particular character. Um, you know, they're just, just the track points. Then on the other side, we have more minions. These are for the combat points. So when you're playing as a boss or a minion, you're going to grab one of these counters uh, to keep track of each of the different scores. So if you're playing a, a gunswinger, I could grab his health dial if I wanted it to be a little bit more thematic. Um, but if I'm playing as any minion, I could use it as well. And I could use a different side of a different one for their combat points. Um, yeah, I just kind of want to show them off a little bit. Alright, then we're going to hop into the character boards. Uh, which, if you've seen um, the other unboxings, this is going to be the same exact idea. So, we're going to look over their um, their board, their upgrades, and all that fun stuff. So, to start off, we have the Fallen Barbarian. Now, these guys don't have um, a dice complexity like the other characters do. They also don't list the number of tokens, because all the tokens are included in the game box. Um, so I don't list them separately like they do the other characters. Um, but what is fun, we did look over this, you can play these sort of in a mode with everybody else. Um, there is a, you can play, if you just, if you don't want to play the full adventures mode, you just want to play the versus. You can play three to five versus one, uh, because the bosses are a little bit more powerful. You have to have multiple people play against them. Or you can play boss versus boss. Now, if you want to just sit down and play, uh, you like the Fallen Barbarian versus the regular Barbarian as a one-on-one -on -one game, you're probably going to have to figure out your own homebrew way to either buff your Barbarian or nerf the Fallen Barbarian because there's going to be a difference in power level um, just because of the way they work. All right, so the Fallen Barbarian, there's this dice, the same dice for every character using this game. Three swipes, two vortexes, and a chaos. And his abilities are Concussion. Uh, skip player income. A player inflicted with this token must skip their income phase and remove this token. And then he has Stun. Uh, perform another offensive phase, roll phase. A player with a fit this token may take no actions of any kind, i.e. no cards may be played, no defense may be played, no stats, tokens, or passive effects may be used. After the attack concludes, the player who inflicted Stun removes the token and then immediately targets the same opponent with an additional roll phase. If his opponent is removed from the battlefield, this additional roll phase is for uh, So that's kind of a very powerful ability, but this is going to kind of mirror the original Barbarian a lot. Um, so let's look at his board here. So we're going to have a couple of things just to note on here. Um, their ability is going to look almost identical to any other hero boards because they basically play the same way. You roll dice, you try and get various results. But the game in the bottom corner is going to have numbers. So that's going to be the, I don't, I think they call it the initiative number, if I remember right. Um, 
But that means if I rolled, for example, if I rolled uh, three of the swipes, the white swipes, and I rolled one black die, I would have enough to perform low blow because it has a higher initiative of three versus doing the smackdown for five. Um, so you're going to do it ever, whatever your, your end dice results to, um, is what you're going to be trying to achieve. Um, and then with your decks of cards, so like other slight difference on the bottom of every character, every character's card, we went over this during the first video, um, you play these once per turn when you're fighting a boss face up, and it'll tell you what you're trying to do. So if this card is up, he's trying to roll straights. Um, if this was up, he's going to attempt to roll all five black chaos dice. Um, so that means, like, with the first roll, if they roll it and they don't get, if they're trying to do a straight and they don't have enough things to do a straight, they'll re-roll dice until they can get it. Um, so you're not necessarily just rolling dice hoping to hit one of these. Um, they have a kind of objective. But let's start looking at these abilities. We have Smackdown. So it's five, seven, and nine damage. On four of a kind, inflicts concussion. Low Blow deals 5 on defendable damage. Uh, Pain Response uh, deals 6 damage and heals 2. 7 damage heals 3 or 8 damage and heals 4. Uh, Barbaric Roar inflicts concussion, deal 4 on defendable damage. 1 additional collateral damage to all opponents. Um, he's got Unhinged for a small shake, deals 10 damage and receives 1 in return. And a large straight deal 15, deal 3 damage in return. Any damage only applies to at least 1 damage was successfully dealt. Skull Bash. Inflict Stun, then deal 6 undefendable damage. Overload. Roll 3 dice. Uh, deal damage equal to the total roll value. If the roll value is less than 8, inflict Concussion. And then he has a defense of Stone Sting. Roll 4 dice. Heal 2 for each Vortex and a Chaos deal one damage. Um, so he's got a decent amount of healing effects. Um, and then his ultimate is Explosive Rage. Inflict stun, deal 15 damage. Um, so definitely powerful. Uh, then the decks are split into two different decks. They'll have the same backs, but you're going to have your upgrade decks and your basic decks. Uh, so just like a regular character would have. Um, so, like, if you're playing as this character, all the stuff would work like normally. You pay one, you get it, do stuff like that. But if you are um, playing versus the boss, then what happens is you start off with X number of CP, uh, depending on the mission or how many players they are. So, for example, you started off with 10. You start going through the cards, drawing them randomly after they're shuffled. Um, and if I drew SmackDown 2 and I had 1 CP, I would get to play that for my 1 CP down on SmackDown to upgrade him, uh, and I'd be down to 9 CP. Then, if I jumped in and got Skull Bash, I'd have to drop from my 9 down to 7. And then you keep doing that until you run out of CP. Um, or, I don't believe you could probably ever run out of cards. But that's how they upgrade. Uh, so let's take a look at them. Um, and we'll do just like we do with regular characters. We'll throw them on the board. Next to the character card, so we can see what the difference are. So SmackDown 2 um, deals 6, 8, or 10 damage, so each one goes up by 1. But it's also going to change your number on the side here. So it's going to up it to 2, which is still the lowest amongst all the other ones on the board. Um, but it does kind of push you that direction. But then we get SmackDown 3, which has 7, 9, 11 damage, and on a threes inflict concussion but now it ups it to four which is important to note because now if we had low blow it would activate before low blow um so that's kind of an interesting uh dynamic unless we upgraded low blow of course to uh, level two because i guess five um so it says deal six undefendable damage and then we have low blow two deal eight undefendable damage and this is definitely where these guys can get a lot more powerful um because they have all these extra boosts right off. That's, they have extra um, extra levels on almost all their cards. Um, then if we flip to the other side of the board, we have Unhinged, which is our straights. And we're going to get Unhinged, level 2. Move all of my boxes out of my way. Um, 
So it says your small straight should deal 11 damage instead of 10. And your large straight will do 16 um, instead of 15. Um, so it doesn't, doesn't change too much. They're only little tiny upgrades, but you also remember if you're playing against the boss, they're technically free. Uh, but then we can upgrade again to 12 and 17. Um, and it also receives one less damage. It receives two now instead. Um, another thing to note would be is if you're playing, um, I should find the portal crawl for this. It's he's level one. Yeah, so when you're playing against the boss, everyone has shared health. So it's just, this is the Mad Kings. But heroes all then have a shared 50 health. So, yeah, dealing 10 damage is one fifth of their health. Um, you know, that's a decent amount. Having 17, that's, you know, gonna hurt very much very quickly. Um, then on the other side, we have Skull Bash. Skull Bash level 2 says Inflict Stun, deal 7 damage. And then we also gain Skull Smash, which is kind of cool because then we get a, another ability in there like we normally would. Um, another very low initiative. Uh, inflict Concussion, deal 4 unpreventable damage. And that also levels up another time. So now inflict stun for eight damage, or skull smash two, which inflicts concussion and deals five damage. Um, cool. Uh, let's jump down to his back down to his other side. Here we have pain response, level two, uh, deals seven, seven and heals two, eight and heals three, or nine and heals four. But also on three of a kind, room one. Random negative status effect from yourself. So now like now we heal, he can also um, remove status effects. And then we can upgrade that to a level 3, which is now 8 damage and heals 3, 9 damage heals 4, and 10 damage and heals 5. Um, yeah, so this guy, can, this guy can get pretty brutal. Um, Barbaric Roar level 2. Um, and Flick Concussion. Uh, Five undefendable damage and one collateral damage. And then if we level it up again to level three, now it does seven undefendable damage. Um, should definitely be a pain. And then we have his last attack ability. to be overload to so level two. Now he rolls four dice. Um, deals damage equal to the total roll value. If it's less than 11, inflict concussion. Then roll one die, and your hero receives half the value, half the, she's damage equal to half the roll value. Um, so actually gets pretty powerful. Um, and then if we upgrade it to level three, um, it's just straight up roll four dice, deal damage equal to the roll value. Um, and inflict concussion. Um, so it gets rid of that other part where we got some extra damage in the middle, but, um, you're inflicting concussion, so. Yeah, very, very interesting. All right, then his last set is Stone Sting. His defense ability will upgrade. Get you guys out of my way. Um, so now he's, he's still rolls bold. four guys. He has two for each Vortex. Um, but on two Vortex, he prevents one incoming negative status effect. And on a Chaos, he deals two damage instead of one. And then if we upgrade him to level three, uh, he does the same stuff, except now he does three damage. So basically, he just keeps preventing damage, but now he can do more um, physical damage back to you. So that's definitely uh, a cool, cool character. Pretty straightforward, like the regular Barbarian. Um, but let's look at his signature deck of cards. I'm going to move this a little bit. Make it a little bit easier to read. There we go. So he's got Black Springs. So now this is going to have a lot of the exact same stuff as any other game. Because again, you should be able to be played that way. Um, the two different things, again, you'll have on the bottom. it will show what the boss character is trying to roll for that turn. And then the top is when this card's revealed, that's the bonus the um, players get. So like when this card's revealed, players will get plus one damage token to use later. Um, so we have uh, roll four, 
heal one and then two times the number of vortexes. We have royal influence, getting the king's hand. And I'm not going to keep reading the numbers up there. You can see them very clearly. Um, or I'm not going to read the ones down here. So, um, helping wing, remove all pause status effects from active player. Helping wing at two, remove all pos positive status effects from all opponents. Uh, cleansing touch, remove random negative status effect from yourself or a positive status effect from the active player. Cleansing touch two, uh, remove all negative status effect. Uh, status effect from yourself and a random positive status effect. Uh... From all players. Alright. Next up we have Refresh. Uh, heal 2 and draw 1. That's that not a bad card at all. Uh, then we have Coffers. Gain 2 CP then draw 1 card. Uh, level up version Coffers 2. Gain 3 CP then draw 1. Uh, Dower Glass. Trans transfer a random negative status effect from yourself to an active player. Dower Glass 2, transfer all negative status effects from yourself to active player. Then we have some roll phases. We have 6 Fusion. Uh, at the conclusion of your offensive roll phase, change your lowest value dice to 6. Um, do not play this card unless it would improve your attack. Uh, then we have 6 Fusion 2. Uh, change two of your dice to six, and then six fusion three, so you change three of your dice. Um, and then finally we have Chaos Blessing. Uh, roll one die on a uh, slash, deal two damage, vortex, inflict parasite. Chaos dice, e activate player, active player discards one card randomly. Alright, so this group of cards is going to be the same for all four bosses. Much like all player, regular player characters or heroes, have a set of cards that every single one has. All four bosses have these same sort of like generic -y boosting cards. Um, so I'm not going to re go through it for all four uh, bosses because I'll just take a bunch of extra time. Um, so we go get the barbarian, the fallen barbarian specific attacks. Um, he has shout. Uh, the active player receives three damage. He has shout two. Active player receives 4 damage. Head bash. Uh, inflict concussion on the active player. Head bash 2. Inflict concussion on all opponents. Um, skull crush. Inflict stun on active player. Get some. Uh, roll 5 dice. Add 1 damage per slash damage. Uh, get some two roll five dice, add one damage per slash, and inflict concussion. Pierce, uh, if your offensive roll phase results in an attack that is, undef is defendable, it becomes undefendable. And then Pierce two is add two damage, and your attack is defendable becomes undefendable. Uh, so again, fairly straightforward. Um, just extra attack, extra damage, let's do inflict that concussion and stun. Um, concussion's not too terrible. Um, it kind of sucks because, yeah, if, if you hit you too many times in a row, you're not getting money to play cards. Um, well, at least it's not doing damage. Stun, it could be very game-breaking. Alright, let's hop on to our next character. Alright, next up we have our Fallen Gunslinger. Um, so of course, we have his board here. Chalices of Arcane Pistols. Um... His uh, tokens are E evasive. Positive status effect. Spend and roll 1 to 2 to avoid damage. When a player with this token receives damage, they may choose to spend it. If spent, roll 1 die. If the outcome is 1 or 2, no damage you receive. Multiple tokens may be spent to attempt to prevent the same source of damage. He has knockdown. Uh, negative status effect. Uh, Spend 2 CP or stiff offensive roll. To remove this token, any afflicted player must spend 2 CP before the start of their offensive roll. If the player does not, they must skip their roll and remove this token. And then he has Bounty. Um, receive 1 damage, uh, plus 1 damage, and attacker gains 1 CP. When a player afflicted with this token is attacked by an opponent, the attacker 
increases your damage by one and gains one CP and persistent. So it'll stay on them until something removes it. All right, let's look at his board ability. We have Hot Shot. Um, does six, seven, eight damage on four, but time inflicts knocks down. Um, Magic Bullet. Deals 7 damage, roll 1 die on a Scratch, uh, add 1 damage, Vortex, add 2 damage on Chaos, this attack becomes undefendable. Uh, so also time, it's just going to note, his first one starts off as 1, just like the Fallen Barbarian, but this one's 9, where the other one was, I think, 3 or 4. Um, so you can see, like, definitely it's not priority, each character's going to change a little bit, but they try to keep the same type of abilities in the same places. Um, we have Void Shot. Gain evasive, uh, deal eight damage, roll one, half the value, and half the value has damage. Um, King's bounty, inflict bounty, then deal six undefendable damage. His gun down with his small straight, you and the active player each roll one die. If your roll is equal to or greater than ten, get equal or greater, deal ten damage, otherwise, deal eight. Uh, coffin hunter, inflict knockdown, deal nine undefendable damage. Uh, Death Wager, Large Straight, Evasive, and Roll 5 Dice. Uh, deal 2 damage per Scratch, 2 ver Vortex, and 3 ver per Chaos. And Quicken. Um, roll 1 die. Deal 1 damage, then you and your attacker each roll 1. If your roll is greater, prevent half the damage. That's like he shoots you first, and then he gets to dodge. Um, and then we have his ultimate, which is Barrage. Inflict, gain 3 Evasive, Inflict Bounty, and knock down all opponents. Uh, and then deal 10 damage. Oh, knockdown and bounty on everybody. That's That could be pretty devastating. Alright, let's jump in and look at his specific upgrades. We'll start with Hot Shot here. Uh, so we can zoom in a bit so we can see this a little bit better. Apologize if there's a glare. These boards and cards get a little bit shiny sometimes. Um... Hot Shot 2 does 7, 8, and 9 damage, and 4 of a time with knockdown. So just one more damage each. And then, of course, Hot Shot 2 ups that to 8, 9, and 10, but now 3 of a time inflicts knockdown. Uh, then we have Magic Bullet 2. Um, let's see. Let's try and see if I can angle this a little bit better, even. A little bit more glare, but that's alright. I can't do much about that. Let me see. Maybe I can. Nope, not, not, a little bit. Um, it's just my lighting's very terrible. Um, alright, so we have deal 7 damage, and now you roll 2 dice and stag, otherwise it does the same effect. Magic bullet level 3 does 8 damage, 2 dice, and the same effect. Alright. Then if we flip over to the other side, we have gun down. Um, small straight, you act the player each roll one die. Now you do 11 and nine, 11 or 9 damage. And then for gun down 2, you do 13 or 10. Um, so definitely, definitely good. Then his ultimate. Seems like these are the only ones that, uh, working on the number 6 as he get the bonus on these guys. Uh, we have Coffin Hunter 2 on quick knockdown, deal 10 undefendable damage, but also adds Saddle up. Inflict knockdown and deal seven damage. Um, Coffin Hunter three. Uh, inflict knockdown, deal eleven damage, or saddle up to uh, knockdown and deal eight damage. And if we hop back to the other corner here, we have Void Shot, which Void Shot two gives us evasive, uh, deal nine damage, and then do half the damage off of that dice roll. Void Shot 3 um, drops back down to 8 damage, but now you and add half the value is and add the value is damage. Oh boy, so that's even crazier. So yeah, it's it drops it back down, but you get uh, to do that full damage. That's crazy. Um, all right, then we have King's Bounty 2. Uh, we can flip bounty and deal 7 damage instead of 6. And then we have Wanted. Gain 2 evasive and deal 5 undefendable damage. 
King's Bounty 3, inflict Bounty and then deal 8 damage instead, and wanted 2, now ups it to 6, gains 2 evasive and ups it to 6. So was it 2 before? Yep, so it just upped it by 1. Alright, then his abilities on this corner, we have Death Wager. Uh, which is our large straight. Uh, gain 2 evasive instead of 1, roll 5 dice. Uh, does 2 damage, 2 damage, or now 4 instead of 3. And then on Death Wager 2, you still gain 2 evasive, roll 5, now 2, 3, and 4, so it just does a lot more damage. And then his defense ability was Quitting. Um, roll 1 die, deal 1 damage, then you and your attacker each roll 1. Um, if your roll is equal or greater, prevent half. So it adds the word equal in there, because that gives you one more potential shot at it. Um, and then clicking two, now you do two damage, um, and it's still the equal or greater. Uh, so definitely interesting character. Um, I feel like a lot of these, they, they very well mirror their, um, their counterpart. Um, the non-fallen version. Alright, so let's look at his cards. We have Pistol Whip. Uh, inflicts knockdown on active player. Uh, pistol Whip 2, and put knockdown on all opponents. Additionally, if you have, if you only have one opponent, inflicts bounty. Uh, we have Shootout. You and the active player each roll one die. If your roll is equal to or greater, deal three damage. Otherwise, you receive one. Uh, so that makes more sense for a shootout. Uh, elusive, gain three evasive. And Rapid Fire, roll 5, deal 1 damage per Vortex to the active player. So he's more focusing on hitting one player, doing like little tiny amounts of damage, but he can single out players. Our uh, Barbarian tend to do heavier damage, but sometimes has Splash. Um, eat Lead, Attack Modifier, uh, roll 5, add 1 damage per Scratch. Eat Lead 2, roll 5 damage, add 1 Scratch per Per slash and inflict knockdown and then he has reload um, roll one die add half the value as damage and then reload two just add the value as damage um, which could be very bad um, all right so that was our gunslinger so now ooh, we can head into our next character which is the fallen monk all right. Ah, so the Fallen Monk here has the questioning AI rules for some of their stuff. Um, Shattered Chi. So we have Chaos. Uh, when the ability, uh, usually the ability asks for these tokens have no effect until the ability, the ability mentions them. He has Evasive, which we just saw, and Knockdown, which we just saw. So I'm not going to reread both of those. Uh, so we can hop into his board. All right, we have Palm Strike, six, seven, eight damage, three of a kind, gain Chaos. Chaos Infusion, uh, remove a random negative status effect from yourself, gain a Chaos, does three damage plus one damage times the Vortex. Uh, we have Bounce down here, deals eight damage and roll one die. On one, receive one damage, on two to five, gain two Chaos, on six, gain Evasive and three Chaos. Um, and you can stack up to 6 Chaos. Um, Tolmic, gain 3 Chaos, heal 2, inflict knockdown, and deal 4 undefendable damage. So, so far we have 4 different ones that gain us Chaos, but we have nothing to use that Chaos for. So, um, alright, so here we got Fist Barrage, gain a Chaos, and deal 7 damage. Then remove all Chaos and add 1 damage per token removed. So, there we go. Um, Shattered Zen, deal 9 undefendable damage, then remove all chaos, and add 1 damage per token removed. Um, Furious Fist, large straight, evasive, deal 10 damage, remove all chaos, and add 1 damage per token removed. So there we go, so he's gonna build, use one half of his board to build up the chaos, and the other half to spend it. And then he has Alignment, uh, deal 1 damage per slash, plus one damage per, two damage per chaos. On vortex, prevent one damage, then remove chaos and prevent one damage token per removed. 
Uh, remove as many tokens as necessary to break as much damage as possible. So you don't have to necessarily remove all of them. Um, and then his final one is Tsunami, his ultimate. Gain evasive, 5 chaos, and put knockdown on all opponents, deal 15 damage. Um, so it's kind of a neat character, uh, especially like a boss. Like he's, you had one that was kind of like overly aggressive. You had one that was a um, little bit more meticulous, uh, was trying to like come in and snipe specific people at a time. Um, this guy's kind of like a wait and see. He's like, hey, let, let, let you hit me for a bit. I'm going to damp my bonuses. But then when they trigger off, um, you're going to be in for some hurt. Because all of a sudden now, if he's doing an extra 5, 6 damage out of nowhere that you weren't expecting um, or planning for. Alright, so let's look at his upgrades. Focus back in there. We have Palm Strike level 2. Um, deals 7, 8, and 9 damage, and a 2 of a kind gain chaos. Ooh, I haven't seen that before. Like, it was always a 2 of a kind, or not often. Uh, Palm Strike 3 um, deals 8, 9, and 10, and just gain chaos. Doesn't even have to have a special uh, 2 or 3 of a kind anymore. Uh, chaos Infusion level 2. Move 2 random negative status effects from yourself. Gain 1 Chaos per Vortex, and then deal 4 damage plus 1. Um, and then Chaos Infusion 2. Uh, still remove 2, but you do 6 damage instead. Um, so it's just going to up it that way. And if we hop over to our other side of the board, we have our Fist Barrage. Our small straight says gain Chaos and deal 9 damage instead of 7. Uh, and then remove all Chaos Tokens and add 1 damage per removed token. Uh, Fist Barrage, gain Chaos, and Evade, uh, deal 9 damage, then remove all and, per and add damage for that. Shattered Zen, deal 10 undefendable damage, remove all Chaos, and add 1 per token removed. Uh, then he also has Chaos Strike, a little bit easier to pull off. Gain Evasive, gain 2 Chaos, and deal 3 undefendable damage. So that is another way to gain more Chaos, in case he's trying to roll for these 6s and can't get them. Um, Shattered Zen 2 lets him deal now 11 damage, and Chaos Strike 2 lets him gain do 4 undefendable. Oh, almost lost my cards off my table. Alright. Um, Inbounce, uh, level 2. Now does 9 damage, um, and he receives 3 Chaos on the bottom here instead of, or his 4 instead of 3. And then inbounce 2, he now does 10 damage. Um, on 1 to 5, he gains 3 chaos. Um, on 6, he gains evasive and 4 chaos. So basically, he he doesn't receive damage anymore. Um, but he gains a lot more bonuses from it. Um, Tomic 2 has gained 4 chaos, heal 2, and flick knockdown, deal 5 undefendable damage. Just up your chaos some more and gets a. Um, uh, extra damage, and then Tolmic 3, gain 5 chaos, heal 2, and flick knockdown, deal 6 damage. Alright, to the other side of the board, we have Furious Fists. Um, Furious Fists have gain evasive and deal 12 damage, so 2 more damage. Move all chaos and add 1 per token removed, but he also gains Solid Strike. Uh, gain Chaos and deal 5 undefendable damage. Um, yeah, it's just another way for him to gain extra Chaos. Uh, Furious Fists. Uh, gain 2 evasive, deal 14, and then remove all and deal 1 damage. Or Solid Strike 2, gain Chaos and deal 6 damage. Then finally, his defensibility says Alignment 2. Uh, 1 damage per Slash, 2 damage per Chaos. On Vortex, prevent one. Remove Chaos to prevent one damage per token removed. Um, oh, you roll four instead of three. Otherwise, it stays the same. I was like, what's different with that one? Um, and then we have level three here. Um, deal one, deal two, prevent one. And roll four, die. Die. 
Oh, okay, I see what changed. Um, so the vortex per protection before it's on a protection, or on a vortex, prevent one damage. Now it's prevent one per vortex. So he can protect even more with the vortex before he even has to remove tokens. That is pretty crazy. Alright, now let's hop into his ability cards. Do, do, do. Let's see what specific stuff he has. Um, uh, Cogitate. Has gained three chaos. Do not play this card if you already have five or more chaos. Um, and then cogitate two. Gain five chaos. Do not play if you already have four or more chaos. Um, interesting. Uh, dark musings. Remove chaos and gain evasive for each token removed. Um, up until you run out of chaos or reach the evasive stack limit, which is three. Uh, Cascade Cleanse, move up to three random positive status effects from active player, and deal one damage for each one removed. Do not play this card unless it remove at least one status effect. Uh, Chaos Flow, move all Chaos, then deal one damage per token, remove to the active player. Do not play this card unless you have two or more Chaos. Uh, Fists of Fury, uh, roll one in three to five and flick knockdown on active player on six and flick knockdown on all opponents. Channel. Um, gain chaos. Gain, gain two chaos. Gain two evasive and flick knockdown on active player. Um, his roll phase, he has wing rush, roll five, add one damage per slash, and wing rush two. Roll five, add one damage per slash, and gain evasive. Uh, yes, yeah, so it's kind of neat because he, the Fallen Monk, because his whole thing is build up chaos and then get abilities to stun it. Now, as someone playing as him, you could get very strategic with this because you could decide, oh, well, it's not worth trying to go after this ability when I only have two chaos. I'll try and do my other side. Um, but it's kind of interesting as an AI character to see how that would work because they have a lot of cards that are, if, if he keeps tried stuff that forces him to do stuff uh, that only have bonuses for chaos and he just spent his chaos the previous turn, that attack's not going to be as effective. Um, so that would be kind of interesting to see how well he works. Also interesting because he's the like level 3 boss so it seems like he should be the more difficult one, um, but it seems like he could be very hit or miss. Um, but I wouldn't really know that for sure um, until I play as him. Alright, let's hop into the Mad King. Alright, so we have the Mad King himself, the um, overall bad guy for the guy's throne. He's the guy that's bringing everybody together and all that stuff. So now we get to fight him. Um, he has a bunch of abilities, which is to be expected. Um, since he's the ultimate boss. He has Life Siphon, a unique status effect. Um, your attacks steal 1 HP, or 1 health. Your your offensive roll results in your attacks steal 1 health. Attack modifier persistent. Uh, this token may not be transferred by any means, but can be removed. Dominance, unique status effect. Redirect attacks to teammate or discard. When a player with this token attacks, they must roll 1. On 1, they must choose a teammate to target instead. If they cannot, they must discard 1 card randomly, then remove this token. On 2 to 5, nothing happens. On 6, remove this. This token may not be transferred by any means, but can be removed. Uh, then he has Hex, which you've seen in the minions. Um, sixes are considered blank. Whenever a player afflicted with this token rolls a 6, it is after their die has been altered to a blank die phase and has no value. With the conclusion of their turn, remove this token. This token may not be transferred by any means, but may be removed. We have Silence. Uh, unique status effect. A player with this token may not activate their small, straight, or large, straight abilities. At the conclusion of their turn, remove this token. And then finally, we have Parasite. Um, during their upkeep, if a player inflicted with this token has a positive status effect, they receive one damage. Additionally, if they spend a positive, positive status effect to successfully prevent or avoid damage, remove Parasite, and they receive three damage as an isolated source of undefendable damage. Um, so very interesting, and he still uses the same dice as everybody else. Um, would have been kind of neat if he had gotten his own dice, but I did it. Um, alright, let's hop into his abilities. Um, 
He has Punish, 7, 8, 9, and a 3 of a kind, Inflict Parasite, Ridicule, Inflict Dominance, Hex, Silence, and Parasite, Steal 1 CP, Heal 1, da heal one then Roll 1, on 1 to 5, deal 2 undefendable damage, on 6, gain life siphon. That is freaking crazy. Um, especially because that's like the Miggle ability. Um, we have Puppet Master. Uh, inflict Dominance, roll 1. On 1 to 2, inflict Hex. 3 to 4, inflict Silence. 5 to 6, inflict Hex and Silence. On 6, uh, deal undefendable damage. So... Inflicting silence could really suck because that could block one to two abilities depending on how people have them because some characters have their straights on the same same tile. Uh, and then getting that hex automatically blocks their ultimate ability because they can't roll five sixes if one's always going to be blank. Um, but it could definitely hurt performing some of their other abilities because they always have at least one ability that requires four. Uh, so that means now they'd have to roll five basically to be able to get that. Um, so this could both definitely hurt. Insolence, Inflame, Silence, Steal 2 Health, and then deal 6 damage. Uh, Trifle, Small Straight, Inflict Parasite, deal 9 damage. On a Large Straight, Inflict Dominance and Parasite, and then deal 12 damage. Um, Maniacal, Gain Life Siphon, reduce the opponent's health by half, rounding up. This is not considered an attack, Oh, therefore you can't even defend it. Oh. That is, that's just mean. Um, Rebel, active player choosing a negative status effect from their leaflet and inflicts it on themselves. If they cannot do this successfully, the active player is inflicted with silence and hex. Um, then deal 10 damage. So the two reasons why they wouldn't be able to, you might have a character that just doesn't have a negative status effect, which some characters don't, or they might have one where they only have five tokens and they've already spent all five of them. Um, and then his defense ability is Wheel of Fortune. Roll one die. On a slash, uh, deal three damage. On a vortex, heal three. And on a, um, chaos dice, gain life siphon. Um, and then his ultimate ability has ultimate power. Gain life siphon. Inflict silence and hex on all opponents. Deal 15 damage. So, overall, he is very powerful. Um, Lots of his status effects are what make him, I think, a little bit more harder than some of the other guys. That's Silence and Hex. Uh, Parasite, you know, inflicting, uh, stopping you from playing bonuses and stuff. But, like, I like that they didn't make him, like, so brutally overpowerful that you're like, this isn't even, character doesn't even play the same way. Um, so that's kind of a nice effect. Alright, let's look at his upgrades. Cause, yeah, why not give him more power, right? Alright, first up, if my camera wants to focus here, we have Punish 2. So now he does 8, 9, 10, and on 2 of a kind, and flips Parasite. Um, and then he jumps up to 3, he does 9, 10, and 11, and just straight up and flips Parasite. Um, of course he does, right? Then, we're gonna scooch down here. I'm gonna guess Ridicule probably doesn't have an upgrade, because of how powerful it is already. Uh, we have Puppet Master, inflict Dominance in roll 1, on 1, inflict Hex, on 2, inflict Silence, on 3 to 6, inflict Hex and Silence, and then deal 7 damage. So, less of a chance of only dealing one or, only one of the effects, higher chance of dealing both. Um, and then Puppet Master too, because why not just forget rolling dice, just inflict Dominance, Hex, and Silence, and then deal, um... Eight undefendable damage, um, right? Why, why even bother with gambling at that point? Uh, trifle two. Uh, inflict parasite and deal ten damage, or inflict dominance and parasite and deal thirteen. So we had a little bit more traditional. Um, then he has trifle two or trifle three. Uh, parasite and deal eleven damage. All opponents are inflicted with parasite and dominance and deal thirteen damage. So now he hits everybody. Um, Maniacal 2. Uh, gain life siphon. Gain the king's hand. Oh, that's what he needs. Ability to reroll and do extra attacks. Um, and reduce the opponent's health by half. Um, and then he has Wakonic. Um, interesting. 
Give 9 undefendable damage. Not super powerful, but still only 3 dice needed. Um, that is maniacal. 3, he gains 2 CP, life siphoning, and a hand, king's hand, and reduces your opponent's health by half. Um, and laconic 2, he goes 10 undefendable damage. Um, and if we jump back over to this corner, we have insolence. Uh, so if your insolence level 2, now he inflicts silence, steals 2 health, and deals 8 damage. And then insolence level 3, uh, silence, steals 3 health, deals 8 damage. So it's not too terrible. Um, oh boy, ridicule does have an upgrade. I was hoping it didn't. Um, alright, so it says inflict dominance, hex, Silence, Parasite, steal 1 CP, and heal 2. So now you heal 1 more. Then roll 1 die. Um, 1 to 5 deals 3 damage on a 6 to life siphon. So um, he heals for 1 more, does 1 more damage. It's, I mean, it's already brutal, but it's not that brutal. Um, and then the upgrade ridicule 3. Uh, the top half stays the same with the 2 health. And then 1 to 5 deal 4 damage and 6 to life siphon. So it doesn't change too much. Um, it could have potentially been a lot worse. Um, alright, down to our bottom corner, we have Revel 2. Um, active player chooses a negative status effect from the leaflet and inflicts on himself. If they cannot, they're inflicted with silence, hex, and dominance. So it added dominance to that. Um, then deal 11 damage. Um, then Revel 3, instead of even giving them an option, they just have dominance anyhow. But then they do everything else, and it does 12 damage. Um, and then we have Wheel of Fortune 2. Um, roll 1 die, deal 3 damage, heal 4, so heal 1 more. And then uh, gain life siphon and deal 1 damage. So add some extra health and some extra damage. And Wheel of Fortune 3 finally is 4 damage, 4 health, gain life siphon and deal 2 damage. So not a ton, but still going to be a pain to deal with. Alright, then let's look at the Mad King's signature cards. He's got Life Drain. Um, Alright, so it says roll one guy, steal half the value is health. Great. Extra healing. Nice. Um, the King's Wrath. Roll one guy. On a 5 to 6, the active player receives 15 damage that cannot be prevented or avoided in any way. Oh boy. Uh, the King's Antics. Spend a King's Hand Token. During your offensive roll phase, perform three additional roll attempts. Um, and he's trying to get to his ultimate, so there's a good chance he's going to get to that if he has one of those. Uh, we have Beggar. Active player must pay you 2 CP or else receive 4 damage. If desired, they may sell cards at this time. Uh, so they can sell cards to get that 2 CP if they needed to. Uh, conjecture. Active player chooses to receive 3 damage or gain a Parasite, but to not already have Parasite. Uh, cat and Mouse. Active player chooses a number, then rolls a die. If correct, they may draw 1 card, otherwise they must discard 1 randomly. Uh, pain or Predicament. Active player chooses to receive 5 damage or gain Dominance, Hex, and Silence. I love these, this, uh, just the, the King, he's basically like... I'm going to kick your ass, but I'm going to give you options. You know, like he's not that worried. That's kind of a neat uh, effect. Um, it's kind of like, I'm not worried, so I'm going to let you pick your own doom. Um, Neil, active player, chooses a number, then rolls one. If correct, the damage from this attack is reduced to zero. Otherwise, it's increased by four. And then chaotic. Uh, roll one on slash ag five on hex ag uh, 3 on Chaos Ag 1. Yeah, it's pretty chaotic. It's basically it's like the harder number to roll. Uh, does less damage, but the easy ones are going to add the most. Um, so kind of fun cards for him. Alright, so that's our Mad King and our other three bosses. Um, so yeah, it, it, definitely cool, definitely interesting characters. Um, I don't know where my board went for him. Right there he is. Um, yeah, so definitely some interesting bosses to play as a gang. Like I said, you can play as them. Um, per the rules, as 
uh, one versus many, usually three if not more, it said, uh, three to five, or you could play them um, versus each other. So I really hope that in the future they release more, um, another set for this, like whether it's a full, another big box set, Dice Throne 2, or Adventures 2, which I got, or if they even add smaller expansions where it's like, you know, one or two extra bosses to add in there. Um, just to swap some of these guys out. Because that would definitely be cool to have different options when you're playing the same. Like, they could add a few tiles, add a few other things, it'd be kind of neat. Alright, that's what we got for this. Uh, see, check out the previous videos. Check out the next one, which we will go over loot cards. See you guys there. Bye.